Yay! Well, it's after Thanksgiving, so I have a Christmas song for you. It's not your traditional carol, but it is about Jesus being a new kid in town. We're looking for the King, the new Messiah. We're following the star, shining brighter. Old man, won't you help us if you can? He shook his head, but he pointed his hand. There's a new kid in town. And he's lying in a manger down the road. There's a new kid in town. But he's just another baby, I suppose. Heaven knows there's a new kid in town here in Bethlehem. I see you've traveled far, bearing trail. You say these gifts are for the new king's pleasure. I've heard there's a king might come, but up till now it hasn't been one. There's a new kid in town. Lying in a manger down the road There's a new kid in town But he's just another baby, I suppose Heaven knows There's a new kid in town Here in Bethlehem There's a new kid in town, and he's lying in a manger down the road. There's a new kid in town, but he's just another baby, I suppose. Heaven knows there's a new kid in town. Here in Bethlehem. Imagine hearing there's going to be a king coming to Lucas. And the only story that can be told is, well, there's a new kid in town. Just down the road.
beneath that blood lose all their guilty stains the dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day and there may I though vile as he wash all my sins away 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 wash all my sins away their sins by faith I Dream that flowing wounds supply, redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die, and shall be till. my sins away redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I Walter. All right, I'm on. I'm on. Well, welcome to Cornerstone. It's good to be here tonight. Doesn't this place look beautiful? I love this time of year. Oh, the, the, the church just looks so, so beautiful and just celebrating, celebrating our Savior's birth. And, you know, we're, we're coming off of a season of thankfulness, but we're, you know what, I'm, I'm thankful for Jesus every day. And uh, I hope everybody had a blessed Thanksgiving, got to spend time with family, uh, and just enjoy uh, that, that the food and the fellowship. I know I did, probably a little too much, at least the food. Uh, but uh, it's good to be here tonight. It's good to see so many faces. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for the message that, uh, that we have tonight from Peter. Uh, it, when you came in, I hope you got an outline entitled, A Red Hot Return. And, uh, oh, it's going to be a good message tonight, I believe, uh, because it's from God's Word. So, uh, before we get started, uh, we do have some prayer requests that I would like to, uh, to share with you all and then see if we have any others, but also some praises, you know, praise, praise God that we're in this celebration of Christ and that the, the whole world, at least America and, and Christian countries, uh, celebrate this and it's all about Jesus, and whether people realize it or not, Christmas, Christ must 
I, that's, it's all about Jesus. So whether you believe or not, you're celebrating our Savior, and it's our prayer that you come to know him. So, uh, but, so we want to praise, praise God for Jesus and for his birth, for his salvation that he offers us. Uh, tonight, uh, as, as far as praises go, uh, you know, I praise God for each of you. And I, I'm just so thankful that we're here. Thankful that we have a building we can come into and worship. Uh, that we've got security out front keeping us safe. Uh, but really, we're in, a, we're in a country that we don't have to worry too much about being, a, being under fire, so to speak. Uh, but we still have to keep our guard up. But as far as prayer requests, uh, Sherry Wolf, uh, I talked with David Wolf yesterday. She's been trying to get into a lung specialist. Uh, please pray for her that she's able to get into, get into one soon. Uh, he, he told me that they went to uh, the doctor yesterday, and she's got a, a spot on her lung that they had identified. They thought that it was tied to the pneumonia, uh, uh, but he said it's gone from like 1.1 centimeters to 2.2 centimeters in a rather quick time. Uh, so they're a little concerned about that. Uh, they're, they're trusting that it's not cancer, but if it is, they're trusting in, the, in, in our Savior, the great physician, to take care of that. So we want to lift Sherry Wolf up, and, and certainly David, as because uh, he's, you know, while, while uh, he, he doesn't fear, but he, he, he has some worry for her. I mean, it's his, it's his wife, and uh, we never like to see our spouses, our kids uh, going through anything. So uh, we want to lift up Miss Faye. Praise the Lord. She's doing better. She's, uh, she's about to get out of the rehab facility. Uh, and then she's uh, going to be moving into a group home. Uh, I believe there's three other people that are living in this home and a caretaker. And uh, Miss Marcia said she'll be moving uh, on Friday, Friday of this week. She's going to be going to this group home. Uh, she, she said it's a Jesus deal. So we're, we just want to, we praise God for that. We want to uh, praise him for her healing. Uh, and we want to pray that she finds comfort and peace in this transition because it's it's hard when i went and visited her the week before last she wanted to see her dog she wanted to be back in her home uh, but she's 96 years old and she had that fall and broke her hip and it, it's just it's it's hard it's hard getting getting old is is hard i think we can many of us can raise our hands and say Hoo -hoo. It, it doesn't get any easier uh, we want to continue lifting up jim harris uh, i believe he's still in the hospital uh, they, they got one issue under control, but he still has some internal bleeding going on. They're trying to figure out what's going on there. Uh, so we want to lift him up for that. And then Miss Cindy, she's diligently uh, sitting, standing by his side, caring for him uh, there at the hospital. And, and many of you are aware that she fell a couple of weeks ago when he was in the hospital and got several stitches above her eye. And uh, she's, she pushes herself while she's caring for him. And... Uh, as again, as many of us would, so uh, we just we want to lift them up, and then uh, certainly we want to be lifting up the Waddle family. Uh, such a tragedy, uh, but glory as well. Thank you, Jesus, that that Shane met our Savior and had a relationship with Him, and, and when He closed His eyes last Wednesday, He opened them up in glory. And so, amen for that. But we want to lift up Gail, Cody, the rest of the family, uh, as they continue to deal with, with Shane not being there. And I, 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 he's, he always sat right here, right here with Shane's seat. And I miss him. I miss him. Because it's such, such a blessing, such a blessing. But praise Jesus, we know where he is, and and. We're going to see him again. We are going to see him again. So do we have any other prayer requests? Miss Jan. Walter. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, Chloanne Thomason is down with bad back. She's in bed, actually. Who's this? Chloanne Thomason. Okay, Chloanne Thomason. And um, Patty Davison, I think, is still in the hospital and having some problems with the shingles still uh, was that was it shingles I think she's about over that but she's got other problems okay okay thank you so much 
Any anyone else? Any other? Over here we got Matt. Oh, we'll let you get. I just had a praise. My dad came to visit on Sunday, and he said he's never been at a church more hospitable, kind. He said he couldn't count how many people came up and said hi to him and made him feel welcome. And he said he loves Sunday school too. <laughs> and oh, so that's. He just couldn't stop talking about it. So thank you for making my dad feel very welcome while oh, he was here. Oh, that's great. That is great. He, Roy was, uh, it was such a pleasure meeting with Roy. What a blessing. What a blessing. Also, Randy, if you remember that little boy, Asher, at Shane's yes. nephew. Yes. CPS had come to get him today, and they're going to be placing him in a foster um, mm. home. So just pray that he just gets put in just the right place. Yes. Mm -hmm. Matt. Oh, yeah, Matt. Matt, yes, Matt. Uh, just for Courtney's dad, uh, he had to go to the hospital just recently. He, he can't stop choking, so I don't know what's going on. And he has a DNR. Okay, Courtney's dad. Okay. All right, thanks for updating us on that, Matt. We will be lifting him up as well. And, and Courtney. That's Okay, okay. All right, any other prayer requests? Uh, Miss Jan had one more, or a couple more maybe. Two more. Two more, amen. Um, I really would like to request prayer for our great-grandbaby Leilani. She's not in a good situation, and um, I pray for her. Uh, and also for our grandson, Chris, who is in prison. I also fear for him. Okay. Amen. Amen. Any others? Do I see Lisa over here? Or Sandy? Um, so Marcus and, I mean, Leslie got baptized. She's been asking Marcus to go to church, and he's, like, blowing her off in a roundabout way. So I just want to pray that I'm mean, here. His new wife is asking to go to church, and he's just kind of whatever. So, um, and then I'm flying to Midland on Saturday. I just want to pray for safe travel. Okay. While Walter's heading over that way, we want to uh, lift up the Smith family. Bethany gets married on Sunday. They're getting married at a small venue. Uh, I believe it's in Princeton. So... Uh, lift her up as, as Bethany steps into that new family, into a, a, new, a new life. So we're excited for that next chapter. Bethany's, Bethany has grown up in this church. So, all right, what do we got over here, Brother Walter? Mm, my dog is, they're putting my dog down mm. in a couple of weeks, and it's his last Christmas. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, any any others? Walter's got one. Oh. Well, I wanted to uh, lift up a couple people. Uh, first off, my mom, told my she's going through and has some pains. And also for uh, her travels, uh, she's going to be coming down and staying with us. And uh, so I just uh, had a prayer for that. And then also for Bob Castile, uh, he is having uh, bladder cancer surgery tomorrow mm. at noon. Okay. So we're going to keep him lifted up in prayer. And also uh, for Tom Brennan, he is going to be traveling to China uh, for his safe travels. Okay. Amen. Amen. In, any others? Uh, Please continue praying for my mother's neighbor. Uh, he's, he's home still, so thank goodness. Uh, and then Sandy's mother has got a good friend uh, that is dealing with cancer. I think his name's Jerry. Is that right, Sandy? Okay, we want to lift up Jerry. And then, uh, you know what? Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's, let's bring these requests up to him. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the opportunity to be here in your house among fellow believers, Lord, to worship you, to praise you, and, and Lord, to lean upon each other with our burdens. Lord, we know we can bring them to you, but it's so good to have you in the flesh sometimes through other believers. 
So, Lord, we lift up these prayer requests to you, Lord. There's prayers for sickness, for travel. Uh, Lord, there's, there's prayer to, to get family members into church. Lord, uh, we lift up our lost friends and family members to you, Lord, our neighbors, our co-workers. Lord, we pray that, that we might be a reflection of you in their lives and that, Lord, they may come to you in this holiday season as we worship you, as we praise you, as we celebrate Jesus as a, as a nation, as a world. Lord, let us never forget the sacrifice that you made for us. And let us never forget the importance of it, of sharing that with others. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you with these prayer requests. Lord, you know them each. And, and Lord, we thank you that your word says that where two or more are gathered, I'm there also. And Lord, we are here unified, lifting these up to you. And we thank you that, that you've already got the answer. Lord, we, we thank you for the praises that we were able to share. And, and we pray now, Lord, that you move in this house. The Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Please move as you feel led. Lord, we thank you for that, Jesus. We, we pray now that our hearts would be open to receive this message. And Lord, we pray that, that we would sense the urgency, Lord, as we look at your red hot return. Lord, please speak to our hearts. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so uh, when you came in, again, I hope you got an outline entitled A Red Hot Return. Uh, we're going to be looking at 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. And this is our second to the last study in this letter. Next, uh, Not next Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, we'll be finishing it up. Uh, we have, a, have a, a, the last couple of verses in this chapter, verses 14 through 18, we're going to be looking at Peter encouraging us to be committed. You don't want to miss that as we finish this letter up. So it's, it, again, it's great to be here tonight. Uh, before we read God's Word, uh, I want to give you a quick reminder of what Second Peter has been about. It's, it's, he's talked a whole lot about false teachers in this letter. That's been the main focus of what he has been sharing with us. And in the previous verses, we've seen that false teachers and unbelievers mock the idea of a coming judgment, of Jesus returning, saying, where is the promise of his coming? Where is he? He's been saying this for 2,000 years, y'all been saying he's coming. Where's he at? They're denying the coming of the judgment, and, and that gives them an excuse it gives them an excuse to continue on in their sinful ways and, and their sinful lifestyles while telling themselves that everything's okay. You know what? That, that, that this Jesus isn't coming back. I'm good. I'm just going to be happy. I'm going to live my life the way I want to live it. And, and Peter encourages us. He says, uh, you know, Jesus is coming back. And tonight we're going to see how he tells us he's coming back. But we ended last week's message with Peter telling us that the Lord is long-suffering, not willing that anyone should perish, but that all would come to repentance. Y'all remember that's how we ended, ended last week. That's how he ended with verse 9. Well, tonight we're going to see that knowing and understanding the coming judgment should encourage us as believers to live godly and holy lives. And it should motivate us of the urgency to share the gospel with our lost friends, our lost family members, our neighbors, our co-workers, those around us that don't know Jesus. It's urgent. It's urgent that we share the good news with them. So as, as we uh, prepare to get into his message, if you could stand with me while we read God's word. If you're able to stand, if not, please remain seated. But... Again, we're going to be reading from 2 Peter chapter 3, starting with verse 10, going through verse 13. And I'm going to go ahead and start uh, one verse back where we ended last week uh, with verse 9. So if you don't mind, if, you, if, if it's on the same page, great. But here's what Peter tells us. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness. But is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He, he's telling us Jesus, 
his delay in coming is not a delay. He, he truly wants everyone on this earth to come to repentance so that we can all be with God. But then we open up tonight and, and Peter tells us, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, and as we get into it tonight, please speak to our hearts. Lord, please arm us to go out these doors and share the good news, but also the coming judgment with those that we know and love. And it's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, Peter jumps right into his message tonight, telling us point number one. He says, Christ's return will come without warning. He's coming without warning. It's going to be sudden. It's going to be quick. Verse 10, he told us, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. He says Jesus is coming with a red hot return. When he comes back, it is going to be red hot. And he opens with a declaration point A, a declaration. He says, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. He's not just, he's not going to give everybody a warning. He's not going to say, hey, get ready because I'm coming. He's saying, you better get ready. You better be ready because I'm coming. And I'm going to come when you don't expect it. Watch the skies, but the day of the Lord will come. It will. It's going to be sudden and without warning. And Peter, as he's telling us this in this writing, he's quoting Jesus. Jesus promised that that he's going to return unexpectedly as a thief. Peter didn't make that up. Peter told told the disciples that. He said that, that he would come unexpectedly as a thief, breaking into an unguarded house in the dead of night. Here it is. Thieves don't announce when they're coming. Right? If they if they told if a thief told you they were gonna come into your house, you would start preparing. You would probably buy extra locks for your doors. If you knew that there was a crime spree in your neighborhood, you'd probably get the guns and, and have them loaded if you have them. If not, you'd probably be trying to do everything you could to protect your home and to protect your loved ones. Well, Peter says, Hey, Jesus is coming like a thief in the night. That's what he told us he was gonna do. He's coming unexpectedly, so you better get ready. You better be prepared. He, Mark tells us in Mark 13, 32, well, Mark penned it. Jesus said it. Jesus said, but the day and the hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. He said, take heed and watch therefore and pray, for you do not know when that time is. There's a lot of people that are trying to say, okay, it's going to be on this day. We know it's going to happen here or there. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Jesus said, I'm going to come when I'm ready, and you better be prepared. And in Matthew 24, uh, in Matthew 24 verses 36 through, 34, th- through 44, he gives even more details of Jesus' same words as he tells us, Uh, as he penned, that Jesus said it this way, but of that day, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming, but know this, this is Jesus saying this, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, Therefore, you also be ready. The Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. That's Jesus telling us that. And then John writes in Revelation 3.3. 3, he, he tells us that Jesus said, Remember therefore how you received and heard. Hold fast and repent. 
Therefore, if you, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. That's what Jesus said in Revelation, according to John. Tonight, Peter gives us a warning. He says, Jesus is coming back, and it's going to be a red-hot return. But he goes on to tell us that when the moment comes, he says, destruction is going to follow. When Jesus comes, it, it's not going to be like it was the first time he came. When he comes this time, destruction is going to follow. Because in point B, he tells us stars will be destroyed. He says, the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. A red hot return. He's not referring to heaven, to the heaven of God that, that we look forward to going to. He's referring to the stars in the sky. He's refer he says that the sky will disappear in a loud noise, like the roaring of a massive fire. Have you ever been around a, a, a large fire and heard it crackling and, and just see, see how, I mean, feel the heat from it and the destruction that it causes? He says that's, that, we're, that the, the, the stars will be consumed by fire. He says stars are going to be destroyed. They are going to come down. And Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet told it like this in the Old Testament. Isaiah 13, verses 10, 9 and 10. Isaiah tells it like this. He says, Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he will destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. Peter warns us. He warns us. And, and he warns us in point C. He says the destruction will be immense. He says the earth and everything done in it and built on it will be burned up and destroyed. The destruction is going to to be immense is what he tells us. And the prophet Zephaniah, this is how he, how he described, described it in Zephaniah 1 verses 14 through 18. I'll, I'll summarize it. He says that the great day of the Lord is near, the day of wrath, a day of devastation and desolation. The whole land shall be devoured for he will make speedy riddance of all those who dwell in the land. You know, Peter referenced Noah and the flood, and how God cleansed the earth from the sinners back in Noah's day. This time when he comes, he says, Peter says, he's coming with fire. Fire, you know what fire does? Fire sterilizes things. You know, have you ever seen the old westerns when that somebody gets shot and they heat the, the knife up over the fire, they sterilize it, and then they dig that bullet out. Peter says, Jesus is going to come. It's going to be a red hot return. He's going to sterilize this planet. And we're going to learn in a little bit that he's that it's going to rebuild everything. It's, it's going to be perfect. But again, the destruction is going to be immense. It's going to be terrible. And Peter tells us Jesus' return is going to be red hot. And, you know, sometimes a message like this is hard for an unbeliever to hear. You know, they, they want to hear that Jesus is love because Jesus is love. Calvary's cross proves Jesus' love. God loved the world so much. John 3.16 tells us that he sent his one and only son so that none would perish but all could have everlasting life. That's how much God loves us. But guess what? God is going to judge the sinners, the ones who do not accept Jesus. God was willing to give his son. Jesus was willing to sacrifice himself for our sins on the cross. That's how much he loves us, more than we can spread our arms out, more than you can ever imagine. But with that love comes judgment. And just like a parent correcting a child, they still love Whenever, whenever my dad took me out to the woodshed and got that belt off and wore me out, I learned from it. I knew he still loved me. I, didn't, I had no doubt my father loved me, right? And, uh, you know, I learned from it. Well, God is a father who loves us. And unfortunately, those who deny Jesus, he's, he's, until Jesus comes back, he's given them every chance possible. And, and as we learned last week, his delay, 
He's not postponing anything. His, his desire is that everyone would come to know him. And so it's, it's our job to share the gospel and, and to try to get it out there. Because, point number two, Peter tells us God's fiery judgment will come. It's going to come. He says in verse 11, Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Peter says this fiery judgment is going to come and everything is going to be destroyed. And knowing this, knowing that that's going to happen as Christians, he says, how should we be living right now? What should be our motivation? What should be our goal? Point A, he says our daily conduct should be holy focused. Our conduct should be holy focused every single day. And then point B, he says we must make different choices than the lost world. We've got to make good choices. We have to. Because in 1 Peter 1.15, y'all might recall, he, he told us this. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. In our study of 1 Peter, when we did that, that study a couple of months back, before we started this one, Peter told us that as Christians, we are holy. We're holy children of God. And that we're set apart. We've been set apart by God for His specific purposes. One of those purposes, the primary purpose of us as Christians is to tell others the good news, to let them know that yes, Jesus loves you, and yes, Jesus died for you, and, and yes, he will give you salvation if you just ask for it. But we've also got to let them know that there is coming a judgment, and, and I, I don't want to scare anybody into loving Jesus but we got to share the good news and we got to share the bad news because there is good news and bad news in regards to when Jesus comes back. That's why we've got to live holy lives making different choices than those of unbelievers. You know, in what we do with our bodies, our words, our our thoughts, we've got to be different than the world. When we walk out these doors, if we are no different than they are, I've said this before, why would they want to come in here and see what we're doing in here? Why would they want to be, we've got to be different. When you're different, people are attracted to you. They say, what's going on? How come, how come you're different? I, I, I want to know more about this. But if we're doing the same things they are, we're no different than they are. What do we have to offer that, they, that, they, that the world is already offering them? Why would they want what they already have? So it's not about self-improvement. For us as Christians, it's not about religion. It's about living as God's people, holy and set apart in a sin-filled world with urgency, urgency, because we don't know when he's coming back. He could come back right now. Y'all, y'all have, we've, we've showed the video here before of that preacher that's, that's preaching and, and saying, God's going to come back, God's going to come back, and it could be now. And, and all of a sudden, lightning strikes, pfft, Half the congregation's gone. That's how fast he could come. The other half, where the people that thought they believed or didn't weren't willing to commit, but but that video is uh, that'll make you think that it can happen that quick. That's how fast Jesus is going to call us home. So we got to act with urgency and knowing that Jesus is coming back and that God's judgment is sure. It is because Jesus told us that it would be. But Peter goes on to tell us in point number three, he says, wait on the Lord with anticipation. Wait with anticipation. And he continues with the question that he started in verse 11 when he said, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? As he says, shouldn't we be, verse 12, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God? Because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Shouldn't we be looking for and hastening his coming? Mm. Point A, he says we must share the gospel with dire importance. We've got to. It's, it's so important that we share the gospel. Because he says looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God. 
Peter finishes up verses, verses 11 and 12 by saying that we should live holy lives with anticipation of Christ's coming back, of his return. When you live with anticipation, he says, hastening the return of the Lord. Hastening means to, to move quickly. How are we going to help God move quickly to, to have Jesus come back? Well, whenever I think of moving quickly or, or, or something happening quickly, uh, Christmas, here we are. We're celebrating the holidays. When you're a kid especially, but even as parents or uh, as a spouse or as a sibling, you buy a gift for, for somebody and you put it under the tree and those gifts start piling up and I'm going to go back to my, to my childhood. You're looking under that tree and you're anticipating Christmas morning. You cannot wait for it. Oh, it seems like it's forever just like the return of Jesus, seems like it's forever, but man, Christmas morning gets here, and it's like, wow, Christmas is already here. I get to open up all these presents. That's, that's what, when we hasten his coming, we're anticipating it, and as we anticipate it, it's going to get here quicker and quicker. And as we wait, sometimes it feels like waiting is so long, but it happens like that. And, you know, it, it's not that we look forward to the destruction that he's talking about and everything being destructed by fire but we do long for Christ to return and to come and make all things right for us right we long to see his glory and and as we wait for that we need to be acting with dire importance and sharing the good news with our lost friends and loved ones because we don't want them to experience the pain and agony that is going to come with those who are lost. And the more we share the gospel, the sooner he will be, is what Peter says. The sooner he's going to return. And so we got to have an urgency in sharing the gospel. Because it could be at any moment. He's waiting for one more sinner to come. And it could be tonight. It could be right now. It could be while I'm sitting here preaching. That one more sinner could be accepting Jesus online while somebody's watching it. It could be, ha be happening at another church. It could be happening on the other side of the world. Maybe there's a Muslim that has accepted Jesus, and that's the one. And, and, and Christ says, all right, now it's time. God says, all right, son, go. Take it. Take it away. So we've got to have an urgency because we don't know when he's coming. We don't. And that urgency we have to have because point I here under, under number four is the world we know will be devoured. It's going to be devoured is what Peter tells us. He says the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. His return is going to be red hot. Psalms 50, verse 3. This is what the psalmist said. Our God shall come and shall keep silent. A fire shall devour before him. And the prophet Micah said it like this in verse Micah 1, verse 4. He says, the mountains will melt under him and the valleys will split like wax before the fire. We have got to be diligent in sharing the gospel now. Now. Because Jesus is coming back. He is. And those who don't know, him, don't know him, who do not have a personal relationship with him, have not asked him into their hearts to be their savior and entered into that salvation, they're going to be devoured along with the earth. It's not just the earth and just the stars. It's going to be every sinner that turned from God and said, I don't need you. I don't want you. I don't want anything to do with you. I don't believe in you. That's who it's going to be. That's... That's hard to think about. We've got friends like that. We've got friends. My, my best friend, uh, he called me tonight before church and said, Hey, I, I, I wanted, uh, wanted to let you know I, got, uh, I went to the doctor today and I got some reading. PSA numbers are elevated. I might have prostate cancer, but I, I'm hoping not. I'm trusting not. And this is his opportunity to understand that life is short. And it's my prayer that I get the opportunity to go sit down with him and share this dire message with him. That, look, you die tomorrow. It's not just, hey, everything's good. Let's, you know what? I lived a good life. No. Jesus says you have to accept him. You have to accept him and repent. But praise God. 
Praise God for our final point because Peter tells us in point number four, he says, watch for his promise. Because verse 13, he said, nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for the new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Point A, he says, Jesus will deliver a perfect place. God is going to deliver a perfect place. He said, new heavens and a new earth. Isaiah said it like this in Isaiah 65, verse 17. He said, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. And this is what Revelation, this is, this is what John wrote in Revelation Chapter 21, verses 1 through 5, I'm going to sum it up. He says, now I saw a new heaven. This is John. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And God gave himself, and, no, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. You know what, Shane's, Shane's family... I pray, Michael, we're praying for you as you, bring, bring, as you, as you perform his, his uh, celebration of life. They experience Jesus. He's going to wipe away every tear from their eyes. But there shall be no more death, is what, is what Revelation tells us. Nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. And this is a promise for from God. Behold, I make all things new. All things new. That's his promise. Behold, I make all things new. Here it is. If you're a Christian, if you have a personal relationship with Christ, this is God's promise. Behold, I make all things new. Paul told us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. If you're in Christ, you're a new creation. Christ comes back and sterilizes this planet, cleans it up, makes new heaven, the stars. Every, God is going to make it a perfect place for a perfect people who are made perfect through Christ Jesus. We are made righteous through him. We don't know the day or the time that he's going to return, but we do know. We do know that it could be any time, any time. And as believers, we don't have to worry about that red-hot return because he's going to call us home before he comes and cleans this place up. But we do know people who should worry. We do have friends, neighbors, family, co-workers that should worry. Christian, Christian, believer, watching online. It's so important. It's so important that we share the good news with urgency that we share the message as we anticipate a new earth with where righteousness dwells we need to share our hope we've got that hope Jesus gives us that hope through Calvary's cross and I'm going to say this if you've never if you've never truly put your trust in Jesus if you can't say with 100% confidence tonight, while you're sitting where you're at, while you're watching online, if you can't say with 100% confidence that you've asked Jesus to be your Savior and that you've surrendered all to Him, I would beg you tonight, because there is a red-hot return coming. We've learned about that tonight. I would beg you to make the choice to follow Jesus. And it's as simple as three words. Jesus saved you ask Jesus to save you and surrender your heart to him, he will do that. And it's our prayer here tonight that if you haven't ever truly done that, that you would say those three words. That's, that's our prayer. And if you're here tonight and you did, amen. If you're watching online and you said those three words, Jesus save me. God bless you. Amen. We want to celebrate with you. If you said it tonight, come up and pray with us. Let us know. That's good news. And the angels are celebrating in heaven. 
If you're watching online, call the number at the bottom of the screen. Somebody will be there to answer the phone, but if they're not, leave a message. We've got an answer machine, and I promise you we'll check it, and we want to we wanna celebrate with you. But as we go into, into the celebration season, as we're going into Christmas, let's remember the urgency of sharing the good news. Why do we celebrate Christmas? Because we have a Savior who loves us so much that He was willing to come here for us and take our sins so that we could spend eternity in a perfect place called heaven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Lord, it's, it's our desire that all would come to know you, Lord, just as it's your desire that all would come to know you. Lord, help us to live up to, to your purposes for us as we're here on this earth. Help us to share the good news with urgency, Lord. Help us to share the good news with others. Lord, help us to share the love that you have the love that you gave and the love that you're willing to continue to give through your son Jesus Lord I pray that as we go home tonight that you get us home safely Lord I pray that Lord we would share this news with those around us give us the boldness to do that Lord give us the desire and it's in your name we pray Jesus Amen well, guys uh if we could break into some prayer groups, just lift, lift up some of these needs. Uh, we need to be praying for Brother Michael as he prepares for Saturday's service for Shane, his going home service. Uh, I, I'm excited for the message that Michael's going to share with the family because it's one of hope. It's one of urgency. It's one of love. And let's lift him up. Let's lift up our, our continue to pray for our search committee. Uh, we're praying that God is, is bringing his man. We're trusting. We're, we're watching for that open door. And uh, God is good. He is so good. Let's, guys, let's pray. God bless you.